Hey guys, this is Pineapple, and today we're going to be talking about The Promise Neverland. I don't have an intro ready for this series yet, but I hope you enjoyed the video as we talk about everything you need to know about the important characters in the series without going too deep into the horror going on in the Gracefield house. If you have no idea what's going on, but you're interested in this series, then stick around. And if you want to know more about when videos are coming and stuff like that, make sure to follow me on Twitter at Vocal Pineapple. The link is in the description. Without further ado though, let's talk about The Promised Neverland. Hit it! So what is The Promised Neverland and why should you check my content for it in the next 12 weeks? Well, The Promised Neverland is a hit manga in Weekly Shonen Jump that has been rising in popularity over the past year or so due to the amazing writing and drama that the franchise brings. Many fans have compared it to Death Note, and this is actually a comparison that you can hear quite a bit. All over the internet, I see headlines and quotes like, this is the next Death Note, or Promised Neverland is the closest thing to Death Note coming out of Jump in this era, and I'd have to agree to be honest, but I'm not sure if this is because I'm just unaware of a similar series, or because Neverland really is that good. Before I go into each of these characters that I'm about to explain, I want to get the tone right for you. First off, Promise Neverland impresses its audience because it's actually quite shocking. For a weekly shonen jump manga about a bunch of children, the actual subject matter is fairly dark in this show. They aren't afraid to kill characters, and the dramatic angles that some characters are seen from really helps to apply the main tone. Your perspective into this world comes from children. Everything is bigger to them than it seems, and this is true for their enemies and their challenges, but in classic shonen fashion, we have characters that see the giant challenges before them as obstacles that they must overcome, and that's what makes The Promised Neverland so good. You see, the characters themselves are young children with very high intellect. The show takes place at the Gracefield House, a lovely home for orphans. These orphans are very intelligent and they get tested every day on all sorts of questions. They basically have to take SAT tests every day and this determines which children are the smartest. Some children get adopted while they're very young, while others have to wait and they tend to grow a tad older and wiser than the other orphans. But every single orphan is eventually adopted without growing Growing to be even teenagers. The actual property that the kids live on is beautiful, and there's wide open fields for the kids to play in, but there's also safe forest areas for them to explore. They have pretty much everything that they could want in their situation. It's not like they have TVs and movies or games, but they have a very tight knit family, and the head of that family is Mom. Mom, or Isabella, is the head of this property and the core caretaker of the orphans that we find in The Promised Neverland. She's the one that takes care of the kids on a day-to-day -day basis, and all of them love her. She's the nicest and fairest woman that you could ever meet, and none of the kids ever doubts her because she's given them the perfect environment to grow and feel nourished in. All of the orphans take pride in their own intelligence, but they also take pride in how helpful they can be to mama. And this system makes it so that everyone is always working together to keep things going in a positive direction. The children have a decent amount of freedom when they aren't taking tests, and they have big dinners and meetings and all sorts of stuff, but there's a few things that they aren't allowed to do. There's a few places in the house that they aren't allowed to visit, and there's a few spots in the forest that they aren't allowed to go. I mean, you know the deal. This means that something is wrong. After all, this series can't just be about a bunch of happy kids on a happy farm having a happy life. There has to be more for this series to live up to this Death Note comparison, right? Well, I'll go into detail about that in my next video, which should be dropping very soon. But in this video, without going too deep into what's going on with the events as we see them, I'll be going into the characters that you want to remember. These characters are important to the events going on in the next few episodes and this arc in general, and they'll have a major part to play in your enjoyment of this show, so let's get into talking about them. First, we have Isabella. Isabella is the thick mom of all the orphans in the Gracefield house. She's not literally their mom, of course, but she's the one that takes care of all of them, and she loves each and every student. She knows all of their names, and she pays enough attention to all of them that she even knows their little mannerisms and stuff like that. Just like most things in this show, though, there's got to be a dark side to this. You see, it's cool that the caretaker for all of these children knows every little thing about them, and I can see the idea for why as a parent you'd think it'd be nice to know everything about your child, but the issue here is that this can be a pretty suffocating force. 
Have you ever had that family member or maybe an ex in your life that just knew too much about you and your personal life and it felt like you just couldn't get away from them? Like you couldn't joke with them or surprise them with anything because they knew you too well. There's something creepy about that that I honestly don't like and I don't think it's just me. There's a certain freedom you get from someone not knowing every detail about you and that's part of the human experience. That's part of how we learn and how we grow from each other because as we learn about other people and other people's experiences, we start to grow based off of the information that we're getting. When we're surprised, we have a reaction to that. And when we get lied to or when someone is holding something back in conversation, it isn't always best to call people on these sorts of things. And when you're the person that's lying or holding something back, even if it's for a good reason, you could imagine the feeling in your stomach you'd get if someone were to call you on that lie or if you had to lie to someone that knows you very well. That's the situation with Isabella and the other kids. She knows all of them so well that she's able to tell when they're lying or when something is up, and this actually makes her one of the scariest characters in the whole show. Without going into what goes on behind the scenes, it's obvious that the person running things here has to be aware of what's going on. What makes Isabella scary is that she can know what's truly going on, and she can still smile in the faces of all of the children and deceive them. She's the mother of the group, but she's also sort of like the watchdog of the group. And in another way, she's like a mist of sleeping gas spread thin all over the plantation. I say this because Isabella, just by doing her day to day activities and actually raising these kids as if she loved them and they were all precious to her and actually raising these kids like they have bright futures and she was preparing them for those is sort of like her pacifying everyone on the plantation. She makes their existence as peaceful as possible and then lures them to their fate. This character that wears lies is a lot more complicated than what I've explained here, so be ready for more Isabella. Next up is Sister Crone. We see Sister Crone in the opening, and at the time of this video, only episode one of the anime is out, so I won't go into too much detail about her. But let's just say that Sister Crone is another worker at the Gracefield house, and the atmosphere around her is quite different than Isabella's. Whereas Isabella is supposed to be a sweet and serene sleeping gas that the kids slowly inhale over their years at the Gracefield house, Sister Crone is like a tear gas dispersed amongst the students. She's a truly disruptive presence and she offers up a load of great horror-esque moments, so I'm really excited to seeing her and how they frame her presence in the anime. Just know that when she shows up, it means the plot has gotten the ball rolling. That's it for the adults, so now it's time to talk about our other three main characters. Emma. Ray, and Norman. These three kids are the oldest kids in the Gracefield house, and they're also three of the smartest around. These three score super high in their tests, and they're always trying to one-up each other, but their friendship is absolute. They've been together longer than anybody in the Gracefield house, and even though they know they'll be separated by adoption one day, these three have a bond that can't be easily broken just by being separated. First, let's talk about Ray. Ray is an introverted young man who lives in the Gracefield house. I believe he's just 11 at the start of the series, and he's the kind of character you'd imagine he is just from seeing him. He has that sort of cool guy Sasuke-like design, and that means, as you could imagine, he's a bit more serious and grounded than our other characters. Being one of the most intelligent students in the class, Ray is the sort of character that picks up on things quite easily, but he's also the kind of character that sort of fits in and around because he's not the kind of character that really stands out. Ray is a very cunning and witty character, and this means that he can come up with solutions on the spot in a lot of different situations. He's pretty morally ambiguous sometimes, and this means that his decisions are strictly about what's best in that exact moment. He doesn't always think about what's best for everyone, only those that are important in the moment. But this plays into his introverted nature. He doesn't really play with the other orphans, and he reads a bunch of books, but this has helped him in his ability to solve puzzles, and it shouldn't get you confused. It's not like Ray doesn't love all of his siblings. It's the exact opposite. He's sort of outspoken and he doesn't have a ton of patience, but he still does deeply care about every single orphan in the Gracefield house, and you should look forward to seeing Ray do some pretty awesome stuff in this season of the anime. Next up, we have Norman. Norman is another one of our main characters, and he's definitely one to pay attention to. Norman has gray hair and blue eyes, and he's pretty much the prodigy of the Gracefield house. He's smarter than pretty much every other one of the students in the Gracefield house, and he has beyond adult level smarts. I keep hammering down how smart he is, but seriously, Norman has scored a perfect score on the Gracefield SAT test multiple times, 
So don't forget that this character is capable of some pretty genius level plays. Norman is an interesting young man, and he's 11 at the start of the series. He's definitely one of those characters that adds to this theme of Promise Neverland being like Death Note because he uses his head a lot and he definitely knows how to look at the bigger picture in most situations, and this is because of how calm he is. He has the ability to stay calm in most situations and he's very optimistic, often expecting things to go to plan. Norman usually helps all of the other students with whatever they got going on, and this gives him quite a bit of experience. He uses these experiences as much as possible because Norman thinks that it's important to apply the knowledge that one learns on a usual basis. This way of thinking gives Norman access to all sorts of strategic and deductive skills, but it also makes it so that he isn't the most emotionally understanding of the group. Norman is the kind of kid that sees things how they are, but he's also smart enough to see even beyond that. He gets tunnel vision and all options are on the table for him, even in situations where the smart thing to do may not be the best thing to do. He's going to need to have some character with emotional intelligence by his side, and thankfully for him and for us, our final character is here to offer that. Emma is the final character that we'll talk about in this video, and she's the true main character of The Promised Neverland. Emma is a young girl with messy orange hair. She has this weird anime hair piece sticking out at the top of her head, and Emma is an extroverted and athletic character. She fits the stereotypical shonen protagonist archetype just a little bit more than our other characters do, as she's a very reliable character that picks up on everyone's emotions, and she's very optimistic and uppity. She scores extremely high on her tests just like Ray and Norman do, and she has an insane love for all of her fellow orphans and siblings. She loves them more than life itself, and the thought of anything happening to even a single orphan in the Gracefield house fills Emma with horror. She plays with all the orphans and enjoys games and physical activities like tag and hide and seek, but she's also sort of like the center of the group. She's the big sister of the group, and her bravery has made it so that all of the other students look up to her in a way. She's always there to help when any of them ask for it, and she's the one that keeps things fairly organized amongst the students. She's different from Ray and Norman in most ways, but the mix of the three of them is what ultimately makes their trio a threat to the threats that lurk beneath the surface. All in all, The Promised Neverland is a fairly dark series with a great and solid main cast that is sure to surprise you. You may think that a series of a bunch of kids dressed in weird white costumes and such an old-timey look might not be for you, but watch episode 1 on Crunchyroll and find out what you're missing. The Promised Neverland is going to be one of the standout animes of the year, let alone this season, so definitely don't miss out. In my next video, I'll be talking about the threat in the series, so make sure you watch episode 1 before checking that one out because there's major spoilers coming your way. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more Neverland, make sure to let me know in the comments section below and by hitting that like button. I promise I'll have an actual intro and stuff ready in the next couple weeks, but for now, this is what I've got. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit that sub button if you want to stick around for more, and this is Pineapple. Peace.